up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, what's up, people? It's me. I'm L2070, no lie out. Thundercats are on the move. Thundercats are loose, honey. He's about the business of dipping spoons into sugar bowls. Anyway, real girls do real things. So as to make it easier for insertion, maybe? No means no, and yes means no. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up, what's good, people, what's up? It's me, L Teddy 27 and I am back for yet another review. This, ladies and goddamn gentlemen, will be our review for The Real Housewives of My Last Goddamn Nerds. Urgh. The Real Housewives of Potomac, it is season 7, it is episode 19, it is the reunion part 2. Y'all, I'm done. I just can't. I, I I really I got to about the middle section of this reunion part two, and I felt my brain oozing out of my ears. I just I can't do no more. I don't. I can't promise y'all I'm gonna be here for part three because this part one. The way I threw things at the television screen. And I don't even have on my glasses. I don't even know how I'm going to read this, y'all. I just... Let me go get my glasses. Okay, I'm back. I think I threw my glasses at the television screen at one point. I just, I just can't. I really can't. I, 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 I. These women are not worth the energy that it takes. So this will probably be a real quick review. I'm not going to allow myself to get animated. I'm not going to allow myself to conjure up the energy because I can't mm -mm. like this has literally morphed into just some of the worst television imaginable I found myself apoplectic at one point we start off well, we still have Candace giving a sermon on Giselle's dwindling uterus. They asked Giselle what Chris really did, to which she had no response. She had nothing to offer, no explanation at all as to what literally he did. When she was being pressed on it, feckless as Andy Cohen then proceeded to move on to the next time. Oh, we'll talk about it when Chris comes. Continuing to protect Giselle. Mia found a way to chime in over and over and over about it as if anyone cares about her and her opinions on this topic when she has nothing to do with it. She wasn't there. She has no dog in that fight. The same Mia, who was ceremoniously getting drugged by Giselle at the beginning of this season about possible medical issues. <sighs> then there was the debunking of the lies that Madame the Muppet, <clears throat> Deborah, gave about Chris and Eddie. Roll back tape, nothing to see here. And Ashley's response was, well, my friends still stand by their statements and they say that production must have altered the footage so that the words coming out of Chris's mouth doesn't match what was really said there. This is the point and people just sat there and accepted that. This is the point where my blood began to boil. This is the point where I, this was, this was the start 
of me becoming incredibly angry about wasting brain cells on this show. <sighs> like the fact that Andy Cohen would allow a member of the cast to say that production was altering video to make what someone says not align with what was actually uh, what someone is saying on screen when we watch it not align with something that is that happened in real time for him to just allow that to sit there not check it not say anything for other women on this cast <coughs> to sit there and act as if oh this stuff is believable nobody so now a member of this show has questioned the entire credibility and validity of said show and 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 basically um told the viewing public that what you're watching is not really what's happening so what is the point at this at this point what is the point of us watching They discuss Candace's IG Live. And here's the point that I want to make. More time, energy, real estate was spent on Candace's IG Live than other important parts of this reunion. I just can't. Robin chimed in. Listen, at this point, I just, I think I just flipped the switch and tuned out was so angry. I was so just not here for it. I just tuned out. I just said, I just can't. They went to lunch. Because then Candace and Robin started discussing their friendship and why Robin played the recording. Robin played the recording because she's trash. She is trash. The reason Robin gets cheated on by Juan is because nobody wants to stick their penis in a pile of shit or a pile of trash. She's a lying sack of crap. They went to lunch. Robin, when they, Robin then, and see at this point, when they were getting ready to come back from lunch and Robin announced that she had to change her tampon I really was done because at that point I quickly sprinted to my toilet and vomited profusely with projectile style vomit for about 15 good minutes. And oh, I, I let me move on because my stomach is not sitting well just even talking about this. I, I, I can't. Uh -uh. They then they then discuss. Karen stealing ideas from everybody. At that point, Karen went into Karen mode and started lying about everything. She lied about the candles. She lied about the live show. She just lied about everything. I didn't care anymore. If Karen's only purpose at this point is to come on, spew her lies, and then just sit there and make faces, get the hell off the show. Like, I had nothing. I have, no I have nothing. I have nothing. I am Whitney Houston. I'm with Easton right now. I have nothing, nothing, nothing. Please don't make me close one more door. I don't want to hurt anymore. Giselle talks about her hysterectomy. Cue sympathy music. Cue the requisite, you know, sympathy that everybody's going to throw at Giselle. The same Giselle who when another cast member was going through medical issues, she came on screen and questioned them and castigated them. The same Giselle who didn't want anybody to know anything about it until it was advantageous to her getting close to the reunion when she knew she would be drugged for all she was worth. But now, Andy Cohen let her gallivant on stage Put this out there. 
do the fake cry and fake sad. It ain't not one tear come out that I ain't go on and on and on with this story about how she was in the hospital. Now, hey, where was this? <clears throat> where was this energy for Wendy? Because if you recall, Wendy was very open and honest about her medical conditions conditions and what she was going through we went through that with wendy we saw her and her husband at the hospital at the emergency room having emergency surgery and nicole hen only wanted to spend 2.5 seconds talking about what wendy had going on but wanted to have a whole moment for someone who frankly will tell you she does not care about Wendy and what she has going on medically. She doesn't care about Mia and what Mia has going on medically. But now we as an audience are supposed to care about her and all that she has going on med medically and, and surround her with prayers and sympathy. And we were reading all of these um, emails and tweets about how so many women could sympathize with Giselle and everything that she went through but there was no emails read sympathizing with what Wendy had going on because her medical issues doesn't, doesn't matter there were emails and tweets read about Mia and basically dragging her because Mia was confused about her medical condition but there was no energy wrapped around her Miss Cohen, you are a feckless, a feckless piece of shit, Andy Cohen. I would not sympathize with Giselle. I would not give a damn about her and whatever the hell she got going on because she doesn't give a damn about anyone else moving forward. I mean, she's one of the worst people walking the planet moving forward. Andy then asked, after he set up this whole long moment, then asked Giselle why she won't share her personal business, but is always spreading everyone else's personal business and wants everyone else's personal information to get front row attention by her. And as soon as members of the cast started to try to add on to that or... um as they tried to unpack that, he wanted no parts of it. Go back and watch. He immediately switches the subject. Immediately. As soon as the other cast members began to try to unpack Giselle and her level brand of fuck shit. And the fact that you don't want anybody else to get in your business, but you're in everyone else's business. If you want, go back and watch. As soon as those other women began to unpack that feckless piece of shit ass. Andy Cohen immediately changed the subject and said, moving on, we're moving on to the next topic. There's the consummate protection of a woman who protects no one, of a woman who attacks people verbally, of a woman who does everything to bring down and castigate every woman on this show, who does everything to drive a stake into and split up every strong black family in this show you andy cohen protect this horrible heinous person that is the worst example of what black women can do you want to protect her and you want to give no credence and no smoke to when people try to unpack how horrible she is to the entirety of our race of people But you got all the smoke for everybody else. We then discussed Wendy. By this point, I checked out. I was checked out. They talked about Wendy and what she had going on with her medical um, conditions. And then they get into uh, Wendy and me. I, I, I was completely checked out. At, at this point, I was so not here for the rest of it. I was completely checked out. Completely checked out. Andy asked Mia about Peter. She says her and G had sex with the woman before she was Peter's girlfriend, so she wasn't Peter's girlfriend. I didn't care. I, I, I literally could not care. 
they discuss the assault on Mia. And this is when we were, we went from DEFCON about two to DEFCON five. It was this moment right here because we had a series of statements made by people that just sent me into complete fucking overload. Mia refused at this point to be accountable for the assault on Wendy. She then tries to deflect and brings up lies saying that Wendy was sleeping with Peter. No truth, no evidence to this. Then she said, oh, I saw the camera. I don't, we, we don't know what mythical camera is. She, she saw, she's just throwing things out there to deflect from the fact that you committed a crime on camera. That was assault. That's a crime. And you're deflecting from the fact that we are now going into discussing the crime that you committed on camera. Wendy says, Mia fucks for lobster. Robin then went to an entire dissertation about how she was right by saying that Wendy was antagonizing Mia. So let me get this straight. Andy Cohen. Y'all had a whole five minute spiel of Robin backed up by video footage, unseen video footage. <coughs> Y'all had a whole five minute spiel where you allowed Robin to go on and on and on about how she was justified in saying that a woman who had a crime committed on her and who was physically assaulted was an antagonist after she was assaulted twice, y'all allowed Robin to get on that stage and have more minutes for that than you took more minutes for that than you did unpacking the fact that another woman on stage is the worst representation of black women we've seen in television history, probably. One of no parts of us are back in that. But a lot of smoke for continuing to proliferate this this notion, this trope. That this beautiful, dark-skinned black woman was wrong, but was actually the one who got assaulted, but was some way, shape, form, or fashion wrong. Y'all had no problems proliferating that, right? You then go over to Ashley, who then has no problems, no problems at all, saying that she flip-flops on her stance with regard to violence. No problem with that. No problem with it. Allowed her to go on and on and on, explaining away how her flip-flopping on violence was okay. You then switch over to Giselle, and you allow her to defend the fact that she was okay with this beautiful black woman being assaulted, and her justification was, I just don't like her. It was at that point, because you had, you were, you were so incensed that you brought your own security to a meeting with Monique because you felt so afraid to be in the same room with Monique. But when Mia assaulted Wendy, to you, it was justified and okay because you don't like her. If that's how you feel, Giselle, it's justified and okay for you to have your fucking uterus ripped out of your body because I just don't like you. You see how horrible that sounds? You see how heinous that sounds? That's as horrible as you sound, Giselle. But y'all wanted us to have sympathy for this bitch. Y'all had a whole situation where y'all wanted us to feel bad. Y'all had the, the sad music. Y'all gave her a moment to try to conjure up some fake ass tears because we're supposed to feel bad for this bitch. I would not. Then, after you spent a whole 15 minutes 
explaining how it was okay for this beautiful dark-skinned black woman to be magically the, the bad person in her own assault by this light-skinned woman. And y'all explained away why this light-skinned woman was okay to be violent on this dark-skinned black woman. And then you want to introduce colorism as if that was going to be a safe conversation. I wasn't even here for the whole colorism conversation at all. At all. The reason I wasn't here for the color, um, for the um, colorism conversation is because the main culprits of colorism was never going to admit to it and were never going to do anything about changing their behavior. And that's Giselle and Robin. Nothing's going to be done about this. These women just went on a whole long rant about how it was okay for Wendy to get assaulted. Mm -mm. Nope. Jacqueline joins the stage. Jacqueline said that her family is disgusted by Mia and her antics. So am I. So is the rest of America. Both Mia and Jacqueline start pulling out alleged receipts and stuff, whatever they had going on, and it goes off from there. I don't even know. Like, I don't, I, I don't know how you can make this better. I don't, I don't, there's no, I mean, we are literally at the worst form of television, the worst representations of black women. And and they're okay with that. Of course, Andy Cohen and, and the white people there in the production are perfectly okay with how this comes across. They edited it. There were hours and hours and hours and hours of footage and they edited it this to what you see here because they thought it was appropriate. Andy, if you knew that the colorism conversation was too much or out of your area of expertise or the topic you shouldn't have discussed, you absolutely, you and Bravo had a responsibility to bring someone in to rightfully and appropriately unpack and discuss colorism, but you're leaving it to these whores? who can't even discuss normal topics, who can't even decide that it's not okay for people to be violent with one another. You leave it to them to unpack colorism and bring no expert in, no Ayanla, no nobody who can really come in here and really go in on what's really happening here. So you have this 90 second conversation where idiots, and I do mean idiots, are trying to unpack colorism. Y'all, I'm gone. Y'all get in the comment section if you want. Watch if you want. Do whatever. I, I have no more energy. I'm done. That's all I got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.